Okay, it is with great pleasure that we now formally award our 2017 Victorian Department of Education and Training Higher Education and Skills Groups Fellows. The Victorian Department of Education and Training under the Higher Education and Skills Group Division has been a long-standing investor in our fellowship program. This year, 10 international fellowships were offered to vocational training practitioners who are employed within the Victorian government contracted TAFEs, registered training organisations, adult community and further um, education organisations and learn local organisations. And uh, these fellowships aim to develop opportunities within the vocational education and training or VET sector to assist in building an education state in Victoria that produces excellence and reduces the impact of disadvantage. So um, the fellowships that are supported and uh, sponsored by the Higher Education Skills Group. The focus is very much on examining innovative practice within the education system. <laughs> um, also to uh, looking at ways to engage students um, and to build quality teaching and learning and um, also, I guess, to facilitate connections with industry um, as a way of uh, supporting employment pathways for um, students. So, um, I would like to uh, invite Edu DeHue, who's the manager for the Higher Education and Skills Group, and from ISS Institute, our treasurer, Jack O'Connell, to come and present these awards. So uh, our first recipient is Simon Bruce, he's from Holmes Glen Institute. Simon's fellowship will explore how the correct combination of social and collaborative tools and technologies aligned to the appropriate learning approach can be established as a framework around the concept of consequential learning. And Simon will undertake his fellowship through visits to the UK, Hungary and the USA. So Simon, congratulations. <laughs> Our next recipient is uh, Alain Grossbard and uh, Alain has identified that by offering students short-term work placements overseas, a new generation of future graduates will have enhanced future employability opportunities. Alain is looking to seek and develop strong links with the uh, vocational education and training sector, professional organisations and business communities in different countries. And uh, he will undertake his fellowship through visits to Ireland, the Netherlands and the USA. So big congratulations to you. Our next recipient is Tracy Fenton. And Tracy is from the Paran Community Learning Centre. Tracy's fellowship will examine successful, sustainable engagement programs that lead to employment outcomes. She will meet with international services that work with disengaged young people and study their methods in getting clients into education and then employment and look at the methodologies and pedagogies that they, that they utilise. And Tracy will be visiting Scotland um, during her fellowship. So Tracy, congratulations to you. Our next recipient, uh, Anagar Karindakar, is from uh, Swinburne University of Technology, TAFE Division. And Anagar's fellowship is uh, focusing on learning from countries that have mandated building information modelling, or BIM, um, how they actually prepared for the introduction of this process, and how they have translated that and embedded it into the, uh, into the VET curriculum. The findings will help move Australia forward with its own implementation as we are already behind other developed countries in this field. And uh, Anagar will be undertaking her fellowship through visits to the UK, Singapore and Denmark. So a big congratulations to you. Our next recipient uh, is Lino Rhodes, um, who's from Olympic Adult Education. And, uh, Lino is acutely aware that adult literacy learners who have experienced trauma often enter the classroom with what is commonly referred to as baggage. Her fellowship will investigate the idea that creating a secure attachment relationship between the adult learner and the teacher will lead to a transformational change which will greatly improve learning successes and develop stronger pathways into future education and employment. And Lino will be undertaking her fellowship in the UK, Canada and the USA. So 
Our next recipient, Paula Cudi, is from the, Inter, uh, the Institute of Health and Nursing Australia. And Paula has identified that training in healthcare requires more workplace participation, but that there is often a barrier presented by employers when it comes to work placements. Paula's fellowship will explore this challenge so that more Victorian employers in the growing healthcare industry are offered meaningful work placements. And uh, Paula will undertake her fellowship through visits to Switzerland and Finland. So Paula, congratulations to you. Our next uh, recipients are uh, sharing the, uh, the honour of their fellowship. Uh, Kate Thompson and Karen Dimpke, who are both from The Bridge. Kate and Karen's joint fellowship will identify best practice in Europe, with a particular focus on two of the four ACFI strategies under effective approaches to re-engagement, um, outreach and engagement, and teaching and learning. And um, Kate and Karen have just very recently returned from their fellowship travels, and um, we are looking forward to hearing all about it very, very soon. So Kate and Karen, congratulations. Now, unfortunately, our next uh, fellow couldn't be with us this evening, um, and that is Katrina Watt, and she's from Sunny Tafe in Mildura. Katrina's fellowship aims to explore ways to increase the number of international students participating in education in regional Victoria, and she will use her fellowship to investigate effective overseas strategies and techniques used to support students from their first introduction to education and training through to higher education, employment and lifelong learning. And Karen is actually travelling on her fellowship at present and uh, right at this moment in time is in China. So we will accept her certificate on her behalf. Our next uh, recipient is Farron Yen, who is from the Melbourne City Institute of Education. Farron is acutely aware that identifying and acting upon the welfare needs of disadvantaged persons is paramount to any successful education program. Farron's fellowship will investigate successful models used to support persons who have a variety of structural or situational obstacles to education. And uh, her fellowship will be focused on um, spending time in organisations and government departments within Singapore. And unfortunately, Farron can't be with us this evening uh, as she is overseas for a wedding. So again, we will accept uh, on her behalf. So again, can we please congratulate the 11 fellows? Uh, and, and really acknowledge what their contribution is going to be to our vocational education and training sector moving into the future. Oh, we have, have we? Yes, we do. Oh. <laughs> How did I do that? My apologies, Daniel. <laughs> I'm sincerely sorry. Okay. Daniel O'Hara is from Skills Plus. And the irony is that I've been mentoring Daniel, so I don't even know how I managed to do that. <laughs> Daniel recognises that international policy decisions that are mirrored locally are seeing an increase of accountability and transparency in education that has given rise to high stake testing and high stress educational environments. Daniel's fellowship will investigate best practice engagement models, including outreach, that have successfully engaged disadvantaged learners who have left vocational education in an attempt to bring them back into the education sector. And uh, Daniel will be visiting Germany and Ireland. And a very big congratulations and a very big apology from me. <laughs> okay. So um, I would now like to um, acknowledge and invite up to um, the front, Mr. Vincent Volpe, who is the chair of the Italian Australian Foundation, and uh, Alicia Romano, who is secretary of the ISS Institute Board, and uh, we will present the Italian Australian Foundation Fellowships for 2017. So the first recipient is uh, Anna Caoni, and Anna aims to use her fellowship to introduce a pioneering art education methodology called the Martineau Method to Australia. The Martineau Method proposes that the concept of making art should be embraced as a platform for initiating creativity as a necessity 
and as it is aimed at all ages, can assist individuals to become creative thinkers in education and other professions. And uh, Anna will be uh, undertaking predominantly uh, her fellowship in Italy. So Anna, congratulations to you. Okay, our next recipient uh, is Ingrid Gayotto, and through her fellowship, Ingrid will investigate the preservation, regeneration and development of Italy's architectural and cultural heritage, particularly within the context of the innovative, and I know I'm not going to say this as well as Sir James did, albergi diffusi or scattered hospitality model, with a view to applying this knowledge to promote sustainable tourism initiatives within Australia and beyond. And uh, Ingrid, of course, will be visiting Italy for her fellowship. So Ingrid, congratulations to you. And our final recipient uh, for the Australian, uh, Italian Australian Foundation for 2017 is Rocky Meluso. And Rocky was only interviewed and uh, offered his fellowship at the end of last week. So I think, am I right in thinking that you're still on a bit of a high? <laughs> yeah. So Rocky is a mechanic, mentor to many school students interested in automotive careers, as well as an employer of automotive apprentices. Rocky is also establishing a go-kart racing team and will visit Italy to visit world-class go-karts so that he can better understand these machines and then adapt them to suit the Australian landscape and in turn contribute to the industry, build partnerships with Italian manufacturers and benefit peers and others employed and working in the automotive industry. Um, and of course, create an opportunity for more young people to become engaged in that industry and in that sector. So uh, Rocky, a very big congratulations to you. Okay, now um, earlier on Sir James mentioned um, the Valmortaba um, International Fellowship for Innovation in Specialised Trades. And um, as he indicated, unfortunately, Elsie uh, is not able to be with us tonight. But um, we would, of course, like to acknowledge her uh, continued and generous support of ISS Institute. And I'd just like to very quickly um, mention the fellow who's being funded under that program this year, who unfortunately couldn't be with us this evening, as he too only found out a couple of days ago that he'd been successful. And um, he came down from Sydney for his interview and just couldn't make it back today. But um, Tim Havilar, who was the, the uh, successful recipient, is a heritage stonemason, and we use his fellowship to build upon his skills and use those newly acquired skills to uh, develop best practice training programs and immersion activities to then mentor and support others in the heritage and conservation industry here in Australia. So um, we look forward to, uh, to following his travels over the course of uh, the next 18 months or so.